What's going on guys? Derek here from Williston Audio Labs. Today we're going to talk about Demore Engineering and what they're all about. Yeah, mainly about two guys, Juan Rodriguez and Anthony or Tony Demore. We'll refer to him as Tony D from here out. But uh, Tony worked for Rock for Fosgate years ago and actually was their lead engineer and designed what's known as Rock for Fosgate's largest amp ever, the T15 KW, 15,000 watt amp, around 2006. This amp was crazy, four channels rated down to one ohm bridge or half an ohm stereo for up to 15,000 watts RMS. This amplifier sold for $20,000 and there was only about 20 of these ever made. Also one of the best measured amps by the Power Cube according to the Power Cube designers. This amplifier is just massive, huge. I'll leave the links in the video description if you want to see these old videos from Steve Mead. But you also may know Demore Engineering from tools such as the DD-1, also the AMM-1, which is my favorite kind of handheld amp dyno. This is the one I tell most people to get. And of course, the Big Daddy Dog AD-1 amp dyno, the one that you see in almost every one of my videos. But you guys may not realize that, that Demore Engineering also does diamond box. They make these insane boom boxes. You have to check those out as well. They've been reviewed and highly regarded in the market. But we're going to take a step back and talk about the car amplifiers, and they make amplifiers up to $8,400, their A-series, handmade. These things are just beautiful. You can see the back of his SUV here, the demo vehicle, that's got a 1500.2 as well as a 1500.4. These amps are drool-worthy. They have won awards all over, and they're just amazing. It's incredible to see amplifiers like this in a car. But we're coming back to Earth today. And we're going to look at their E-Series amplifiers. And specifically, the one we're looking at is the E400.4, which is the four-channel model rated 60x4 or 100x4. So let's take a closer look at that particular model here on their website. You can see it retails for $219. And it's called Clean D Technology. And what's all this Clean D about? Well, I asked Steve Mead if I could use this clip from his video. So let's see what Tony D describes it as. Oh yeah, we got Tony D right here, we're filming. Um, I got just a real quick question, but Clean D, can you please explain why this is cleaner than regular Class D? Yeah. The process is pretty much the same as any other Class D, but what makes it clean is the kind of filters that we use in it. So we saw a problem with uh, all the Class Ds that we had tested in here. When they clip, they get really ugly, and uh, at high frequencies, it's, there's a lot of garbage that still comes out and it had to do with the output filter. So we use really good output filters, and also we have EMI filtering on the B+, Plus, which was the other part of the Clean D. A lot of the, uh, most other Class D amps don't have this, and it causes a lot of electrical noise to get into the 12 volt system of the car, and that can trigger check engine lights and all kinds of other random errors. So so we have EMI filtering also on, on that connection. So. Um, with those things, it's just a lot less electrically noisy. A big shout out to Steve Mead for letting me use that clip. I greatly appreciate it so I didn't have to interview Tony again and ask him those questions. So let's check out the E400.4. Uh, Demore Engineering did send this to me as a disclosure, but you guys know I'm going to tell you what I think. Right off the bat, you can see here the amp and you see the goodies it comes with for mounting screws. Uh, High-level input adapters, some fuses, and as well as Allen's keys. He had to give those up. These are 25-amp ATC-style fuses. And, of course, the owner's manual here. Let's take a closer look at the manual to see what the ratings are. The E400.4 is rated 60 watts by 4 at 4 ohms, 100 watts by 4 at 2 ohms, or 200 watts times 2 bridged at 4 ohms. And you can see the size here compared to my hand. The amp is really small and very compact to fit under your seat pretty much anywhere in your car. As far as dimensions go, 9.3 inches by 5.3 inches, and the 9.3 is actually on the mounting end, so the farthest across. 1.9 inches or 48 millimeters for the height. Here on the input side of the amp, you can see on the far left, we have inputs for channels 3 and 4. We also have the high-level inputs. 
We have level control, base boost control, and then crossovers, as well as your high pass, low pass crossovers. Now, what's interesting here is channels three and four on the left. I don't know why they didn't put channels one and two on the left. And also, the other thing that's a little bit confusing is the switch on the top there for channel three slash four. I'm going to show you that. So channels one and two are at the top, but channels three and four at the bottom. But if you switch it to channel three, four, you can use the low pass on both channels if you bridge the amp. On the opposite end of the amplifier, we have the speaker connections, the power protect LEDs, as well as the power inputs. Now, these speaker leads are the over and under style is what Dean calls them. Channels one, two, three, and four are top and bottom, plus at the top, minus at the bottom. If you want to bridge the amp, you use channel one positive, channel two negative, and channel three positive, and channel four negative. So I got you some graphs and displays here so you can understand it better. The amp also offers four gauge for power and ground, as well as a 12 gauge for the remote. The speaker leads are also 12 gauge. Now let's talk a little bit about those two 25 amp fuses and where they go. Now one thing you guys may have noticed from before is when I showed it came with extra 25 amp fuses, uh, where did the fuses go? <laughs> no fuses here, no fuses here. Well, according to the manual, the fuses actually go on the inside. We'll find out once we take a closer look at the amp guts after we do some testing. So stay tuned for that. All right, now let's fire up the good old SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno to test and more Engineering Amp. How ironic is that? Before we do that though, make sure you smash the thumbs up. Check the link in the video description for some Williston Audio merch. So you can be cool like a big dummy. First up, four ohms. We're going to do the four channel mode. It's rated 60 watts by four. We're going to show two of the four channels here. And we got the other two on four ohm resistors. Rated 60 watts by four at 14.4. You can see we're right at 70 watts here at 14.4. So it easily does the rated power plus a little more. Now reset the dyno for the uncertified test, which will take us up to the clipping point. And let's see what we get here. Again, 60 watts by four is the rated power. And as far as it clipping, we got virtually the same as the 1% THD, 68 and 70 watts per channel. So right at 70 watts. Now let's reset it for the dynamic burst track. Again, we're using one kilohertz tones here because we're assuming that people are gonna run this full range. And we're getting a little over 70 watts per channel, about 72 watts per channel or so, right at 14.36. And as far as the efficiency goes, we measured 81% the four channel mode at four ohms. Next up, we'll try two ohms. Again, the four channel mode is rated 100 watts by four. We're gonna be measuring two of the four channels here. The other two are on resistors at two ohms. So let's check it out, rated 100 watts. And we're getting right at 110 or so if you average those two channels together, 108 and 112. And again, people may ask why the difference in the channels. It's very rare that you will see amplifiers give you exactly the same power in a two or four channel amp. But the differences are so minute, it really, you can, you'll never hear the difference in two watts. And if, if you have 100, that's like 2%. So you see 108 and 110 also at uncertified up to clipping. And dynamic, we got a little more. This amp has got some reserve power. 129 watts per channel at 14.44. Now, what about that efficiency at two ohms in the four channel mode? And we measured 80%, so that's good at two ohms. Better than many of the class Ds we've tested before. Now let's try the two channel test where we bridge four channels down to two and try the amp at four ohms. It's rated 200 watts by two at 14.44. Now, first up, we're gonna try the one kilohertz test. And you can see we got well over 200 watts, 225 and 223. And we said, well, what about 40 hertz? So we ran another test at 40 hertz. See what we get, see if we can get over that 200 watts. And of course we do right at it, 204 and 202 at 14.58. The rest of the tests here are gonna be also in 40 hertz. So let's run the uncertified test up to the clipping point. And again, most people aren't gonna use this with a subwoofer. And the 40 hertz track will show slightly less power than the one kilohertz mode. So it still did good. You can see here 227 and 223, 14.54. 
Let's reset the dyno here for the dynamic track. See what we get dynamically at 40 hertz. Bridge, you can see again, right at 230 watts per channel, 14.6, that's good. Now let's check out that efficiency. 74% efficiency bridged. Yeah, I'll go with that, that's pretty good. Now we'll check out the results. I'll show you the dyno sheet here. You can pause it if you'd like to see anything up close, but basically it tests, it passed all the different tests we ran as you'd expect from the guy who made the amp dyno that I'm sure he tested this on his dyno prior to uh, sending it out to everybody and make sure it did its rated power. Now next up, I'm gonna do the do it bump dose segment, but I'm gonna use some high quality tracks and they're very short. So use your headphones or high quality speakers and listen. I put it all behind me, some may say People try to warn him, don't go across those tracks Alright, sorry those clips were so short, but didn't want to get a copyright strike. Those are cool songs, by the way. Next up, let's check out what's inside. Take off the four screws on the bottom of the amp. Take the bottom plate off. And here you can see amp guts. We have a black circuit board and we have some amplifier components, some caps, some resistors, some chokes, and the two 25 amp fuses. There they are, very easy to get to, so not that bad. Here they are, right near the B plus section of the amplifier. And as far as capacitors go, we have some 25 volt 2200 microfarad caps, as well as 4700 microfarad 35 volt these are the cap top versions, which are the inexpensive caps. But again, this is an inexpensive amp. So what do we like? The Clean D technology seems to work. Designed by the best, the guy who designed some of the coolest Rock for Fosgate amps, also $8,400 to more engineering amps. Yeah, what can you say there? Uh, compact size, obviously efficiency operation, four gauge power input, since flexible, you can do two, three, or four channel operation. As far as things could be better, I mean, these are all based on the amp being inexpensive and you really can't say most of these, but no Tiffany RCAs. The crossover settings in the manual can be a little bit confusing with that three, four channel switch. Has no remote base, but it is a four channel amp and most people don't need that on four channels. The cap top capacitors are cheap and the internal fuses can be difficult to get to because you have to take the bottom plate of the amp off. Now make sure you check the video description below. I have links to Steve Mead's video on the E350.2 and the E750.1 subwoofer amp. He showed these off, showed the guts, ran some dyno tests, all that fun stuff. So make sure you check that in the video description below. I want to thank you guys as always for watching, commenting, liking my videos. A big shout out to Steve Mead for letting me use many of his clips in this video. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, John, Byron, Justin. Big D, I'm out of here. Here's the audio control LC5.1300. I have uh, four channels bridged to two. And then I have the subwoofer channel going to the four Savard eights. These are wired at one ohm. The amp is not designed or made to go into one ohm, not warranted any of that. So do that at your own risk. We're just gonna, we're doing some extended testing here. Let's try out Ari de, de Niro, that Mexican thing. Here we go. <laughs> 